to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to, went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. Uh, so when I was younger, I heard this story through like a cartoon. Um, it was like a real kind of cheesy cartoon, unfortunately. But Jesus walks up and he goes, oh, Jesus was hungry and he saw a fig tree. <laughs> and he, he like slowly walks to it and he, he reaches in and he goes to find fruit or you know, look for fruit. And then he pulls his hand out and, you know, he, he didn't find anything. And then his face goes sad and then the, he goes, may this fruit or may this tree never bear fruit again. And it just like starts to wither. And I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand, you know, like, he went in there, he was hungry, and then didn't find fruit, and then he cursed the tree. So I was like, man, that's kind of mean. Either he was like really hungry, or he's like really pissed off that this thing didn't have the fruit. And it was like, it didn't click, you know, like it's something simple, but it didn't click in my head until recently, I, I was brought back to this uh, miracle that Jesus did. And um, I learned kind of what the real meaning was was that the fig tree kind of represented the Jewish nation. Um, and uh, you know how the Jewish nation had the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, where they were all about external show. They were all there to kind of impress men instead of God, right? You guys follow along with that. And um, uh, for that tree, the leaves, you know, it, it was all for show. You know, inside of it, it had nothing. Um, so that's kind of like if you're just doing a bunch of religious acts, praying out loud in the public, tithing, oh, hey, I have $100, I'm going to put it in the offering basket kind of thing, you know. Um, that's what the fig tree was representing. Um, and you know what kind of scares me is that when I look into my own life sometimes, is that, you know what's scary is that Christians nowadays could, be, could have a chance of being the modern-day Pharisees. Um, we were born into a Christian family, you know, we are born with, you know, into knowing uh, who Jesus was. And sometimes, like we mentioned yesterday, which I thank God that you know He was talking to to me, and to hopefully you guys too, is that um, sometimes we put you know our relationship with God as a checklist. We go through routines. We go, oh, went to church, um, you know, check. I prayed tonight, check. And what that's doing is that you don't have the heart for God. It's not a relationship with God that you're doing these things. You're just doing it because you're doing it. And what you're doing, you're just starting to grow more leaves. You have more leaves coming out. And um, it goes back to the verse is that what was Jesus really looking for? You know, uh, he wasn't looking for the leaves. You know, he wasn't looking for your own deeds that, that, that were coming out of you, that you were doing on your own accord. Um, but he's looking for the fruits. He's looking for what you're bearing inside. Um, do you have a relationship with God? Uh, is that where these leaves are coming from? Are you bearing fruit and then that's why you're, you're making a little show so people can see God's work? You know what I mean? So people can see God, not your own work. And um, it's a scary thought because if we're just building leaves, you know, just being kind of like the modern day Pharisees that we just all have leaves and a friend walks by and goes, oh, look at that tree, it's real nice. I'm gonna go dig deeper and see what's, what, what it's all about. And you have all these leaves like, oh yeah, um, I go to church and stuff like that. And they go and find that there's no fruit. You just lost that opportunity to show them who God is. You know, you lost the opportunity that God's work, you know, in your life is gonna, you know, um, feed them. Um, and the scary, the real, you know, in this story is Jesus that walks by, you know, and he finds out that there's no fruit and he curses it and it withers. So when the time comes, if you're just all full of leaves and then friend after friend doesn't find Jesus, but then when Jesus comes and searches you and doesn't find any fruit, you know, that's kind of the, that's the end all right there. So, um, how do we know what the fruits are? The Bible gives us, you know, the verse in Galatians 5.22. I'm just going to read it real quick. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Um, it's the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, deep down, you, you need a relationship with God to have the fruits of the Spirit. So, I think we're gonna uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna split into church groups, and um, if we could have the church leaders or the, the youth leaders in the, for that church help lead them, um, answer some or ask some questions, um, discuss how you know. Um, let's talk about the experience last night because it was a great experience. I think 
but if you don't continue to build on that and understand that that was God's work, then it's just going to be probably just more leaves growing. So, um, talk about, you know, individually, what are you going to focus on so that you can produce fruit um, after you get home, uh, back to your local church? What are you going to do yourself to produce fruit? And talk with your youth leaders. Is there anything that the church or the youth group can help you with um, in order to produce fruit? So I think Grand Rapids is going to take the room back there since they're the biggest group. And then everybody else just kind of split up in this room area and not leave. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, 